YouTube, how's it going? Uh, Air of Carthage here back. Not too long ago, I had a uh, I had a viewer ask me for advice on how to build armies, and some people were like, "Hey, just watch his videos on online battles. That'll help." I I agree that should help. There's also other people out there on YouTube who make more online battles. You should check that. But I wanted to kind of give you my my two cents on how to build an army, and then I'll just play a battle real quick. Let's hit the um, let's hit the custom battle screen here, just so I can show you something. So. The question that you asked me is a big question. How do you build a good army? Well, let me start by saying that there is no one good army, and there is no one good faction in this game. There are some factions that are better than others when stacked head-to-head, -head, um, or in some cases there are some factions that are better in one facet when stacked head-to-head. -head. For instance, one faction may be better with cav, the other may be better with infantry, or one faction may be better with all. Um, it just kind of looks that way. So essentially, it's important to understand the different types of units in Rome 2 before you play the game online. So let me just cover those real quick. So you, of course every faction you have to pick a general, that's irrelevant to this conversation because we'll cover the different types of units that are here. You have melee infantry which consists of axe or sword infantry or club in the case of the Suebi I think. This is infantry that's best used against other infantry, and they have a bonus verse infantry most of the time. Some of the cheaper units do not. Um, so melee infantry, again, best used against other infantry in melee. Um, spear infantry, best used as a support unit, uh, or certain spear units can stand on their own. Uh, hoplites, not going to win you most fights with melee infantry, but a fairly sturdy unit, uh, a fairly capable unit. And all of these units are going to have a bonus versus large, or in other words, a bonus versus cavalry, which includes elephants. That's found right here. So each of these units has that bonus, which means that this bonus gets added to their attack when fighting against that type of unit. Then you have a whole different class of infantry called pike infantry. And if this is too simple, I'm sorry, some people are new at the game, they may like this. Um, so I'm just throwing this all out there. So pike infantry is used to create basically a near impenetrable front. The Im how impenetrable this front is depends on how much money the unit cost. The impenetrable front put up by these levy pikemen is going to be much more penetrable, so to speak, than the that of these pikemen versus that of these Hellenic royal guard, and so forth with other factions. So you get what you pay for with these pikes, but keep in mind that when you have pikes, no one in their right mind is going to charge straight into the front of them, so how much you choose to spend on them should coincide with which missile infantry you're going to choose to try and force someone to attack the front of your pikes. Anyway, let's move on to missile infantry. You have a, a few different, three different kinds of missile infantry. You have javelin, sling, and bow. Um, javelin missile infantry is armor piercing based. Um, it's meant to do heavy damage to pretty much any type of unit very quickly, but it has a limited range. As you can see here, that range is 80. So limited ammo, limited range, high damage uh, versus basically any type of unit. Bows. So bows are fairly high damage, relatively low armor piercing, a decent amount of ammunition, and uh, that's pretty much what bows are at decent range. Ranges between 125 and 150 depending on the type of archer you bring. Also certain archers, like these mercenary Cretan archers, have the heavy shot ability which is found here, which basically gives you more uh, damage at the decrease of range and accuracy. That damage is all armor piercing though, so it makes arrows much more armor piercing. Also they have whistling shot and flaming shot, um, so here it uh, reduces the melee attack of units. Could be handy to throw in there before you start a melee engagement. But careful, if, if it flies over your own men it affects them as well. And then flaming shot, which uh, lowers enemy morale and it has a bonus first buildings. Alright, so the last type of missile infantry is slings. Slings are a high rate of fire, long range, and fairly good against armor. Better than bows, but they have a lower attack in general than bows. So that's kind of the balance. In my opinion, slingers do well against other skirmishers. Um, bows do well against lightly armored infantry, uh, or to run elephants amok from a distance. Um, and javelins are kind of like the matchlocks of Rome 2. If you played Shogun 2, that'll make sense. They are great against high-value targets. Um, so that's what I find javelins to be best for. Alright, that covers missile infantry. Let's move on to shock cavalry. Shock cavalry is anti-cavalry cav. 
or it can be used to shock an infantry line with a charge. Best that that charge not come from the front unless a unit isn't braced. So any unit that's getting charged from the flank or unbraced by a shock cavalry is going to be subject to a huge charge bonus from that cavalry. This charge bonus gets added into the attack. I don't know exactly how it works, but it gets added in and massively increases the attack on the charge for these units. Plus, they have this trample ability, which usually launches this charge bonus up to about twice what it is now. So that's what shock cavalry does. It's good for taking down other cavalry units or a nice blow to infantry that's unbraced or unprepared. Melee cavalry has a little bit more staying power than shock cav. It's really intended to be used against infantry. Uh, or in support of an already charged cav fight. So if a charge has already taken place and you bring the melee cav in for support, it can do fine there as well. Um, so you're going to see that, of course, cav or price affects how good that melee cav is, and of course they come by varying degrees in other factions. Melee cav tends to last longer in any type of engagement if it's not charged by shock cav. And the reason that is is because it has higher armor, or not necessarily higher armor, but usually higher melee defense. Yeah, that's what it is. So see, look at this 1,270 talent um, Hellenic Royal Cav, only 22 melee defense versus 43 melee defense on this very cheap Citizen Cav and versus a 49 melee defense on this Aspis Companion plus all the extra armor and health. So as you move up, it tends to increase their armor and health, but they all have pretty high defense. That defense helps them stay in a fight longer. Then you have Missile Cavalry, which for the Epirote faction isn't a whole lot, but for other factions could include Horse Archers and Horse Skirmishers. In the case of Epiros, it's just Horse Skirmishers. Horse Skirmishers are mounted javelins. Um, they can be effective if you can get them to the flank or rear of an enemy. If you do not, the enemy is going to have to be somewhat lightly armored for this to be effective from the front. Although they are still armor piercing, the problem is, is you have a 60 person unit of cav versus a, I think, a 90 person unit of uh, foot javelins. So the amount of damage dealt is actually lessened because they have the same amount of ammo, but it's with fewer people. So keep that in mind when you use these. Elephants. Elephants are their own variety here, and obviously these guys are meant to be killing machines. Best thrown into sword infantry or to the flank of pretty much any unit, and they're also quite good against cavalry. Um, so something to be aware of there. And then of course you have your artillery, which is what it is. So hopefully that gives you a good rundown on what each of the different infantry types are. There's one other thing I'd like to call out. Certain barbarian factions, like the Iceni, have um, shock infantry. Now, they're not labeled specifically as shock infantry that I've seen, but if you look at a unit like these ambushers right here, these ambushers have no armor, but they have a high charge bonus, and they can deploy anywhere on the map. And then if you take a look over here at the Arverni, they have these uh, naked warriors, which can't deploy anywhere on the map, but again, high charge bonus, good bonus versus infantry, no armor. These guys are shock infantry, meaning if you charge them into other melee infantry, they're going to do quite well. If they get shot by skirmishers or anything else, they're going to die quite quickly. So that's one other type of infantry to be aware of. Hopefully I've given you all a decent explanation. Let's go into a battle, and I will try and demonstrate for you win, lose, or draw on um, how I choose an army. And we'll see whether or not my choice was good based on knowing the things that I know about this game. I'm going to need to take into account the faction that my opponent picks and the map that we're on. So the map is Memphis. This is a wide open desert map. So I may not want to choose a faction like a barbarian faction that does better in the woods or something or ambush type factions. Not going to work well in a desert map. So I'm going to go ahead and pick an army that should be well suited to a desert. And in this case, I play as Carthage too often, so I'll pick um, Egypt. Egypt can play fine in the desert, obviously. <laughs> and it's in Memphis, so it's appropriate. Let's go ahead and start picking an army. Well, I'm thinking I want to kind of use some mix of pikes and swords. So I'll do that now. This means that my infantry is going to be relatively low morale. My opponent has readied up, so I need to hurry. I'm going to bring quite a few good skirmishers to try and force my opponent into an unsatisfactory skirmish engagement. You all might be wondering, Eric, why are you taking a carry and axeman for your general? Um, I just want to try this out. Uh, because it can keep my general behind the lines where he's safe. And let's see, I can get me, s I'll take one more shot cav, and then one of those there. And then I can upgrade one of my units. So I'm going for a high numbers, tough skirmisher, pretty tough cav kind of army. We'll be up against Rome, which no doubt is going to be fielding some fairly sturdy units. 
and potentially elephants. I did not field any elephants here, which is, you know, maybe risky on my part. My Rhodian Slingers could potentially help deal with enemy elephants, and my Pikes could also potentially deal with enemy elephants. I'm gonna have to keep my Galatian Swordsmen safe from Cav um, and elephants because they would be vulnerable to both. And missile fire, they'd be fairly vulnerable. But with five Rhodian Slingers, it's unlikely that my opponent is going to be able to best that. So that's pretty much the reason I've chosen my army here. My Pikes can hold up front for a low cost. My Galatian Swords can flank at a relatively cost-effective level. My cavalry is quite strong and is going to pose a threat to just about any Roman cav, because I have three of these Ptolemaic cav, which are very good. And then my skirmishers are also very good, so a lot of my power is right here between my skirmishers and shot cav. Uh, the pikes are very strong as long as they're from the front, and then the Galatian swords, you can see their stats here, are pretty close to on par with Roman legionnaires, except for on health and armor. So, but I also get extra charge. So that's the reason why I've chosen this army. Let's see if the tools and the mindset with which I've used to ch uh, choose this army uh, come out to be true. Obviously part of it depends on how my opponent has chosen his army, and not only that, but how he or she decides to use it. So I've got my skirmishers right here behind my pike line, and I'm going to put my flank, or uh, I'm going to put my swords actually behind my pikes. I don't want them to be exposed to a direct charge from enemy cav, as they would be quite vulnerable to that. And here we go, so I've got a cheap secondary infantry line. All my infantry is cheap, very vulnerable to shock. Um, so I've got to be careful, because they're not going to be very sturdy. I didn't even pick the general type. It's a warrior general, which is probably not best served with the carrying axemen. I should have gotten regular commander gen, but I'll live. Alright, I got my pikes and pike formation. Oh. Sometimes your locked unit groups don't work right. We are at your Wildly frustrating. Okay, let's try this again. Orders, my lord. Fortunately for me, my opponent hasn't readied up. Carrion X-Men! Carrion X-Men. Okay. Let's try a hard Carrion group again. Okay, my hard group's stuck. No idea why it does Citizen that. If coming. some of you all know why it does that, let me know. I'd, I'd appreciate that. Look, those two units are now hidden. Tell Not gonna be for cavalry. long, but whatever. At your service. Who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky. Daddy oh, goes a hawk right in front of the screen. All right, my opponent's ready. I'm ready. Should have told my opponent good luck and fun. All right, so I'm not going to be able to comment a lot because I'm going to be trying to fight the battle. <laughs> Check this out. My opponent has brought a <laughs> a triari I spam. Intriguing. <laughs> With um, two auxiliary Syrian archers, a very unconventional army from my opponent. So, interesting indeed. Well, my Rhodians are going to have no issue with those um, archers. Wow, this is not what I expected, but it'll still demonstrate the fact that um, certain armies that you choose may not be the wisest choice. And I'm not trying to make fun of my opponent, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you. If his army beats me, I will buy you all a Coke. Because, uh, I yeah, and that's a lot of Coke, I'm sure. And I don't mean cocaine, I mean Coca-Cola, sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> Air does not do drugs, folks, nor is he condoning the use of drugs in any way, shape, or form. All right, so let's continue the battle. The Syrian archers are opening up on my men, um, but yeah, his guys are going to get absolutely pizzoned by, by my guys. I really don't want my pikes getting shot here, but I don't really need to run away. His archers are going to be dead in a moment. Uh, I guess I will go ahead and run away my pikes for just a second. Just so as to not take any extra damage. But you can see how quickly my um, Rhodian Slingers will make short work of these uh, expensive archers. These guys are already wavering just down to 60 men. And uh, they are not going to last in that kind of fight. So my Slingers have uh, the same range as his archers, except his guys are in heavy shot. Which is why it says 110 on their range. So the heavy shot's quite damaging. That's why it was able to get so many kills on my archers. Or on my uh, pikes. His archers onto my pikes. Let's go ahead and break my cav loose. We'll make sure my opponent's not doing anything the same over here. I'm trying to think, so Triari, I can't remember how much they cost, but he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so that's 
Yeah, that's the better part of all of his funds. A legionary cab and a legatus and two Syrian archers. Yeah, I think I don't think he has anything hidden, but we'll be sure. He had eleven thousand seven hundred to spend. So let's find out if it's worth it to take uh, all spearmen with Rome. Um, I can pretty much already tell you that the answer is no. But who am I to say? Who am I? Well, let's move up and um, let my slingers have their way with these Triarii in Testudo. They are all in Testudo formation, so this may be a good demonstration on whether or not Testudo formation works. My opponent looks like he's bringing a Legionary Cav out to challenge my Ptolemaic Cav. And he's bringing out his Legatus. It is a little bit risky for me to engage his Cav somewhat close to his Triari, but feeling confident here. Let me show you what happens to shock or melee cab when it gets charged by shock cab. I shouldn't have widened up quite so much, but um, I should have tightened up a little bit to match his formation. Either way, I'm going to win the charge, and my guys should destroy his men in close combat there. And now you all are going to see the devastating power of Rodian slingers. Uh, this I didn't charge over here while I was watching that other one, but uh, his legatus didn't kill a single one of my Ptolemaic cab on the charge. They are wildly inferior. I'm going to hit the quick reload on my men, and let's see just how helpful this uh, Testudo is. Perhaps it is helpful. I haven't checked it in a long time. But I have a lot of ammo. I have a lot of ammo. You can hear the rocks bouncing off their shields, so it's definitely going to buy him some protection. Again though, I'm in no hurry to uh, continue to the engagement beyond this point. gonna let my uh well you know what he has no cab either so there's no sense in me firing all these from the front so let's go ahead and split up so obviously I don't want to just take him fully from the front here. I'll uh, try and get him from multiple directions. My opponent's completely static, and he might just be doing this for the lulls. Sometimes people do that. Get away from his Triari. Triarii, sorry. Sometimes I say Triari. I don't know why. I think it's Triarii. here. So, when you bring an army, make sure to use the tools that you've brought. I've spent the money on these um, on these units. Now it looks like he's clicking a blob to attack order here. Let's bring my Kyrian Axeman up. Go ahead and drop a war cry there. And these units that are engaged right here, I'm going to go ahead and... My opponent is now attacking my... Uh, Pike's head on. That's a bad idea. And I will get you some up close combat footage here in a minute. I'm going to pull my cab away. Get these slingers completely into the flank. Okay. Let's hit this unit and let me get you a close up view of this one. So here, here I am uh, hitting his guys with a hammer and anvil charge. And uh, let's come out of there and let me show you. So even cheap pikes from the front are fairly strong. You can see some of the Triari are going to get through to my men, but not all of them. And I probably should have used a trample charge. My opponent um, must have admitted defeat there or something, which I didn't know you could do in Rome 2. But in any case, there's a demonstration of how I would have picked an army. Obviously my opponent picked a strange army to go against me and didn't end up being a whole big challenge, but maybe he's just trying to understand the game. You know, that happens when you get new players, they're just trying to better understand the game, and in this case, that army obviously doesn't work, but again, could have just been for the fun of it. Maybe he thought I was going to bring a bunch of elephants or a ton of cab, and he's like, I'll just bring all these Triari and teach them a lesson. So, you know, again, I don't know what the, uh, the, the logic was there, but it just kind of shows you what process I go through to pick an army, the different types of units, even though the battle at the end may not have been super decisive, I hope you learned something from it. And for the viewer who requested this, I hope this helps you. 
give me some more feedback if you're also looking for more information, and I'll do my best to, to put together something to help you out. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.